Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm shooting on the Fujifilm X-S10 and I can already tell that Fuji went a bit of a different direction with this camera. So I'm excited to figure out what that's all about. And as is tradition with Fuji cameras, even though I've only done this once, I'm gonna head into our home city of Boston to take some urban shots with this. And who knows, maybe I'll pop it into video mode too and get some 4K clips. But before I head out, let's chat about this thing for a second. So last year, the X-T4 came out and blew everyone away. It was a photo video hybrid beast. But then only a couple of months later, we got the X-S10. And if you're familiar with Fuji cameras, you would have immediately realized that the X-S10 is realized quite a bit differently than other Fuji cameras. So Fujifilm has a lot of camera models out right now that span the whole range from amateur to professional. And they're all perfectly good options. So when they release the X-S10, you kind of got to ask yourself, where does this sit in Fujifilm's current camera lineup? Well, the consensus is, is that it's in the middle of the highly capable X-T4 and more minimal but equally mighty X-T30. So if you're considering getting either of these cameras, the X-T4 or the X-T30, now there's another option that might be a happy medium for you if you didn't want something as intense as the X-T4, but wanted something a little less stripped down than the X-T30. And while you're thinking about that, I should mention that all three cameras in discussion here share the same sensor. So physically, here's by far the most noticeable thing to me, the grip. Although the X-T30 is significantly smaller than the X-T4 or the X-H1, for example, the grip is way deeper and way larger, giving it a much more secure feel than any Fuji I've shot on before. And because of that, I'm tempted to say that this would make a really, really good vlog camera. And I'm sure Fuji purists are shaking their heads out there over this one, but check out these top dials. They totally strayed away from the classic dials that we always see on Fuji cameras. Now we have two unmarked top dials and a plain old mode dial to the right of the EVF. So in every mode, this dial on the left is exclusively set to scroll between the Fuji film simulations. Unless you're in manual exposure and you have a setting set to auto, then you can set it so that's exposure comp. The XS10 is certainly very user friendly and I I feel like if I was a beginner, I'd be able to learn this camera very easily. This also kind of makes me think that this could be an excellent introduction to Fuji cameras for someone who wasn't really sure about them before. Also worth mentioning are the dedicated record button and ISO button on the top here. And one downside here is that it only takes one SD card slot and it's for UHS type one SD cards. So that pretty much tells you right there that rapid raw shooting or super fast video bit rates aren't really going to be a possibility on the X-S10. On the upside though, this EVF is really, really great. I love the flip out touchscreen LCD. The door for the inputs flips open really securely. Also, no headphone jack though, if that's something you were looking for. And it takes the same NPW126S battery pack that a lot of the other Fuji cameras take. So I'm expecting it to have decent battery life, but nothing amazing. For example, I'm about to go into the city and take a lot of photo and video, so I'm gonna bring like three extra batteries. And for a finishing touch, they even crammed an onboard flash in here too. Okay, so as for image quality, I have high expectations for the X-S10 because as we said before, it has the same sensor as the X-T4, which I already know is capable of an amazing image photo and video wise. So shooting wise, where I really think this is going to be different than a lot of other Fuji cameras is like interacting with it and just getting used to this new interface. The X-S10 is different than the X-T4 though in a couple of ways. For example, they had to redesign its own IBIS unit to fit in the smaller body of this camera. And also its mechanical shutter is a lot slower and it can only do eight frames per second mechanically compared to the 15 frames per second in the X-T4. One thing that's cool about the S10 that might be an appeal to beginners or an appeal to people who aren't familiar with Fuji's awesome film simulations is that in auto mode you can select auto film simulation mode where it automatically determines a film simulation based on the content in the frame. Also I should mention that Fuji claims that the autofocus in the X-S10 is right on par with its professional cameras and it certainly does work great but my instinct tells me that the responsiveness in the autofocus of the X-T3 and X-T4 works a bit better. It really seems to me that they want the owner of a Fuji 
Fujifilm camera to feel that they have a more than capable photo and video camera in their hands. And I don't think the X-S10 is any exception to that. It takes 4K video up to 30 frames per second, oversampled from its full 6K image sensor in an H.264 codec. Also, what's really awesome and kind of unexpected is that it can record 240 frames per second in 1080. The video signal is a wimpy 8-bit 420, but considering that, I think it still looks pretty great. And if it really came down to it, you could record externally and get a much higher bit depth. But why would you need rich color depth in video when you can slap on one of Fuji's awesome film simulators in video mode? And I say that jokingly, but I'm kind of serious about that because you're probably not taking professional level video with this thing. And I think it's great that you can just slap a Fuji film simulation on here as if it was just like a built-in LUT. The Ibis works really well, especially in combination with lens stabilization. And another huge plus for video is this flip out articulating screen. That in combination with this super deep grip makes this the perfect vlogging camera. Okay, so I'm leaving downtown and I'm headed into the Chinatown area, which I figured is going to be a perfect spot to try out the vlogging capabilities of this camera, which I'm already doing and loving. Considering how lightweight it is, how deep the grip is, this flip out screen, face detection perfectly, even with the mask on as far as I can tell. So now I'm going to put a wider focal length on, maybe a 16 or a 35, and get some awesome pictures of graffiti and street art and stuff. And maybe get a pork bun. I think I'm definitely going to want to be in Velvia to make like all these colors pop. So let's just see what I can do with this uh, 16 millimeter real quick. And I'm really posted up here right now, but I feel like I could really easily just freehand this camera and shoot from the hip if I wanted to. Or you can post up in the middle of Chinatown and squat in a parking lot like I do. Wow. Velvia definitely bringing out all the colors on this. Okay, so I've been shooting on the XS10 for about 30 minutes now and I finally landed here in the Boston Common. And my general impression so far is that it's a minimalistic approach to Fujifilm shooting. I'm sort of not really thinking about technical stuff and I'm just shooting at whatever I think looks good and it's kind of nice. Hey pup. Hey baby. There are about a million dogs here so looks like it's time to pop the 90 millimeter on and see if I can just get some of these dogs running around because they're going crazy right now. These pups are loving life. Oh, all the puppers are out today. It's immediately old timey. Oh, hey there. When you put it in black and white. Oh man, he just stepped right in front of the light. That is an illuminated dog. Wow. These black and white ones I really, really like. This is an awesome camera for just like low effort shooting. Like you don't want to think too much. going down a little bit so I think before I head out I'm gonna head down to this orange line station get some funky geometry stuff with a 16 millimeter and maybe get some passing trains too hopefully you can hear me over that by the way because that's loud Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up my city experience shooting with the Fujifilm X-S10. So let's pop back into the office for some final thoughts. Okay, 
So I'm back from the city and I definitely have some things to say about the Fujifilm X-S10. If I were in charge of creating the slogan for this camera, it'd be this, the Fujifilm X-S10, lean, mean, and in between. So let's unpack that. I say lean because this camera is so much more minimal and borderline bare bones compared to other Fuji cameras. But with that being said, it's still mean. Heavy hitting image sensor, perfectly good autofocus, and of course the uncompromised attention to color science that you get from Fuji. And finally, when I say in between, it's not just because this camera is probably sandwiched between two pre-existing Fuji models out there. I say in between because in my opinion, it's in between a professional and a serious hobbyist camera. It's so close to the X-T4 s professional appeal, but is lacking in a lot of things like mechanical shutter speed, battery power, a lot of video recording modes, and card slot speed. With that being said though, I do feel like Fujifilm made it a point to elevate the X-S10 over the X-T30 in a lot of ways too. So with that, I'm leaving it up to you to sort of piece together where you think this thing fits into the grand scheme of things. And I really do hope that you get a chance to shoot on this thing soon because I had a really good time with it. So that's my take on the Fujifilm X-S10. And if you have any questions or insights about where you think this camera belongs in the current Fuji lineup, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button down below to let me know you liked it. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll be in the loop whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.